Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another session of The Letter. Now, on the last session, uh, we got a good old boy, Ashton, you know, doing his, uh, you know, investigation at the uh, workplace where Isabella works at. Now, during their, you know, getting all the background lore with BRC in the mansion, um, the good old ghost lady decided to take a visit and uh, have a bit of a, you know, ghost chase scene and all that stuff. Luckily, by a pure miracle, uh, they survived after a bad decision to go through an elevator, but somehow it worked again, and uh, they managed to escape with their lives. So now, we are going to continue after the that whole scary, spooky session, and see what we're going to do from there, and continue. Ba -ba -ba, sometimes I won't get trapped. Alright, yeah, we ended up at the park. I remember this. Luxborn Parks uh, brings a welcome relief, though only by some. The chill that the seepied in my bones is still there, furling and unfurling underneath my skin. If I don't move, if I don't buy myself any with anything, soon my brain will go haywire, and it's the last thing I want to happen when there are plenty of things to do. But, oh. <clears throat> but this already answered all of it, doesn't it? So is death. Just how many copies of the letters are out there? Isabella can't be the only one, and the other people who are also getting cursed. Could it be she's the one who has shown us the one of the five? Maybe even more? That whole pass us to five people business is ridiculous, but at this point, is it still... All in all, we found plenty, uh, we found 21 people who might read the letter. Seven of them deceased, eight if we count Cooper. And that's the... Sorry, and that's only with what we can find right now. We have no idea the contractors or specialists hired from outside the company are, are doing. If we are any way affected. How many more people are suffering? How many are missing? How many are dead? Can I even still blame the rights for this? If anything, they might be in danger as well. I don't think I can wish a curse upon anyone. No matter how big of a douchebag Luca right is. There's also that woman. How do we get her uh, get out of this mess? How do we get away from her? Shit. There's still so many things we need to look onto. Yet, all my body wants to do is pace, burn out, whatever ex access energy there is in me. Alright, Isabella. Get, uh, get on in. Ashton, I'm getting dizzy. Will you sit down? It's the first time Isabella has said anything. She has been sitting quietly since we dropped here. Better and less distracting than watching her nervous habits, I suppose. She certainly seems calm now. Too calm, in fact. For someone who just seen something terrible. But it has been more for uh, than a week for her already. People did do get desensitized to things at some point. Even someone like Isabella. Who knows what's going on inside her head, though? Inside mine, there are too many, and none of them would sit still. Uh, I'm not going crazy, am I? I saw that. I'm pretty sure you saw that, and I didn't ha inhale anything weird. I smoked that weird thing earlier, but sh shit. It's the devil's eggs, man. <laughs> it's kicking in. <laughs> shit, 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 shit. Isabella, please tell me that wasn't. What I'm not expecting when I turn to her is mirth. One that she can barely contain. And you're laughing. You're laughing. Why are you laughing? <laughs> not quite funny. sure I what she that. sees in Those my face. Trying to kill us. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what she sees in my face, but in the next second, a laugh suddenly bursts from her out from her. I'm so sorry, but it's just that you should see the look on your face back there. Y yes, right, sure. I'm not the one who panicked. You almost ripped my arm clean off. Yeah, but... Isabella, this isn't funny. That woman almost got us. We could have ended up dead. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, this is just too precious to miss. You really lost your shit for a moment there. 
You're just trying to get back at me, aren't you? Well, I'm not the one who kept calling someone's scaredy cat for years, and how does it feel to be scared yourself? Oops, sorry. <laughs> ah, I'm a terrible voice. I, I, I'm not scared. Really? Because it doesn't seem that way to me at all. Look, I'm not, alright? I just, uh, I, uh, I don't know what to do right now. Immediately after, the moment passes, replaced by another tense silence. Laughter dies in her lip as if everything sinks in. We're in deep shit, and has finally caught up to, uh, caught up and hit us like a ton of bricks. Hit me, more than anyone. Because she has been warning of us since the day one, and I'm the first person who brushed it off. Despite that, she still reaches out to me, tugging at my sleeve almost desperately. Her hands are trembling, and there's a tremor in her voice when she speaks. Without the cheer, only fear remains. Ones that she has been burdened with from the, be from the beginning. And we're still going to do something about it, right? Not just stand around and let that thing get us? Unexpectedly, she leans uh, forward. Uh, uh, she leans her forehead against my arm, and her grip on my sleeve tightens. There's desperation in there. I quite plea. I don't want to lose anyone anymore, Ash. Wish I could give her that promise. But with so many unknowns, so many things I don't understand about this, how could I? While she still trusts that I can do something about this, baffles me. It all feels uh, wholly undeserved, considering the way I've t treated her. Yet, despite my reluctance, I find myself returning her hold and kind. A, ga a grasp, warm and light enough for comfort. Not a promise, but the closest thing to it. Ellipses. Sunday, and it's spooky! Ellipses. Darkness blurred the edge of my vision. Dark tendrils twist and coil around my limbs. Soft footballs, footfalls, echoes from the far distance, scurrying, scampering, moving in an odd rhythm with the sharp, piercing notes of her laughter. A scream threatens to burst, but my throat closes off ever so slightly. A, s <clears throat> a chill seeps into every nerve in my body, washing every sensation in me apart from one. There is only fear. Once again, her laughter echoes, a sound both bitter and unforgiving. It is the last thing I hear before she reaches for me. The ground trembles. The world slows to a stop. <gasps> the morning breaks into a blurry mist mess of vivid shapes and colors and... Holy shit, cup noodles. Suddenly, there's no feeling of terror and confusion gripping me, despite the vague images that has driven me from sleep. Awareness kicks in shortly, though slow and sluggish, as I blink away from the last remains of unconsciousness from my eyes. The early morning light already streams from the open windows, but the memory sets in and the room finally comes into focus. Isabella's apartment. Pushing myself upright, my eyes wanders idly towards her prone form. She hunched over a coffee table, both her arms under her head while she continues to rest. Then, to the chaos of papers and folders, we scatter left uh, over it before sleep has claimed both of us. We bunkered down here last night, after our nerves have calmed down, mine for the most part, staying together was an unspoken invitation. And anyway, I'm pretty sure neither of us wants to remain alone when there's that... that woman. Is she the one in the first place? The one that normally called a human? Can it still feel guilt? Does it understand pain? Uh, I'd rather get charged for breaking and entering than mess with the, whatever that thing was any day. Not thinking about this still matters when all of our lives are in her hands. She's dangerous. If we don't do anything about her and her, this curse, we'll definitely be pushing Daisy soon. I can't let that happen. I've dallied on this long enough, left my friends in harm's way after the warnings they all have given me. Besides, beneath the terror and the adrenaline that keeps me running, knowing what lies ahead for Isabella, makes it hard not to take action. Paper sitting on the edges of the table calls my attention. 
looking at this light against my hand when I reach for it. It has caught my eye the night before, but with the lot that was still need to go through, I have simply ignored it. The logo in, in, in Basil on top of the page, however, provides this paper a whole new meaning. Not for me, but definitely for her. A scholarship grant, huh? I've only heard her talk about this once or twice, completing her degree, that is. She rather goes in about it in great detail, preferring to keep it to herself. Perhaps it's the fact that she thinks she's already too, cold, too old to be chasing after it. It's been five years, after all. But I caught enough snippets of conversation between her and Zack to know she has never given up on it. Despite how things have pan out with her father, she's one step closer to this part of her life. As silly as this may sound, coming from a friend, I... I like to give her the chance to have this. Whether this means stepping out of my comfort zone and figuring out what the deal is, this curse is, I'll do so. If only the same smile from her, uh, that time again. These days, the only moments she seems to show it when she's asleep. Like, right now. No matter how uncomfortable she appears. I smile in my own, fo own forms, despite this when I glance at her sleeping form again. She hasn't moved since. Her shoulders rising and falling in a slow, ever rhythm with her breathing. You won't think she has any problems this way. Yeah, if only that were true. Sighing, I place the paper back when I've gotten it. Carefully, I won't accidentally wrinkle or damage it in some way. I finally push myself off my makeshift bed. Isabella shifts when I carry her off to the, from the floor over to her bed, but doesn't wake. Simply tucks herself comfortably under the covers I pulled her over her. Briefly, though, she mumbles something to herself and draws in another breath. Becca, Ashton's being dumb again. She drifts back to a deeper state of sleep after. Like hasn't been interrupted by the slightest movement either earlier. But the small smile on her lips remains. When I find myself returning in kind. Uh, who sleeps like a rock now? It's better this way. Better to leave her to her dreams for a moment, which I hope are better than the ones I've had. She has the time to worry about her our problems later when she wakes up. For now, this will be another thing I don't want to take away from her. A moment of respite, no matter how fleeting. She deserves it, after everything she's been put through. But I put, through, uh, put her through. In the meantime, I still have other people I like to check with. Isabella would definitely get in a titsy if I don't ca check on them. Cole looks more in air, meets me upon the stepping out the hallway. Not unusual in itself, this is what Luxborn's weather is supposed to be. A bit cold, damp for the most part, and often more than not terribly drabbed with an occasional sprinkling of rain every few hours. The sky is still clear, but I give it a day or two before the weather takes a turn for the worse. I've complained about the awful rains for years, despite having lived here my entire life. I have to admit, though, seeing it return to the usual feels extremely reassuring. At least something's still normal in the world, when I can no longer think the same for the situation we're in. A nightmare. That's probably all this is. <clears throat> Usually I'll say I've been through worse. But that's simply another lie I often told myself, isn't it? I have fed myself a great deal of lies through the years, and just so I don't have to think about it the next day. Maybe we won't have this problem if I haven't been running away and ignoring things, hiding them someplace no one will see, because I believe doing so is a great slow of weakness. Zack's probably right. Perhaps I've always been afraid of some damn truth to what Isabel has been saying. I have no clue how to deal with it. And now, after it started at me right in the face, I met a loss. She is scared shitless, in fact. What the fuck do I know about ghosts, though? What does Zack, what does Rebecca? Z Man has shown me the photographs, mentioning weird things happening around him these past few days. Bottom line, he knows um, as much as I. Ugh. He knows as much about this as I do. Why else would he approach me? The guy knows stuff, according to him. 
In the end, all I've done is given the brush off some reliable guy I am. Hell, Rebecca's probably in the same boat, grasping for anything that might provide an answer, a way out of this. What can any of us do, when all of us lack any understanding of what's happening? One thing's clear about this, however. The thing is after us because... because of the letter. Both Rebecca and Zack have seen it, too. She will go after them as well. Yet here I am, walking up to Becca's door one slow step at a time. A stalling tactic to allow myself some time to put the mess in my head in a better order. How to phrase this is a... Is there a 90% chance she's still pissed about the whole different matter? It's the only reason I don't didn't check her last night, aside from the ungodly hour of Isabella and I arrived. Well, the only alarm her by... I'm <coughs> sorry. We only alarm her by showing up in her home in the middle of the night, acting like babbling lunatics, and her anger can get quite, uh, qu ah, last quite a while. These days, it seems, uh, only she can easily forgive is Isabella. But even with her, Becca's fuming still takes hours. I run my hand through my hair and straighten out my jacket before knocking. Once, twice, and three times just to be sure she has heard me, even if she's asleep. She's usually awake by now, though. Hey, Becca, it's Ash. Open up. Don't tell me you're still in bed. Seconds tick by. No answer from her, and the dread has started to creep up. I've been trained to handle dire situation, but... This feeling had been doing quite uh, frequently since last night. My mind began to anticipate the worst, and the next minute concern has mixed in with my thoughts, and I bang my fist on the door. Louder this time. She'll definitely be livid, but I'd rather face her wrath than a dead body. Becca, it's Ash. Listen, there's something we need to talk about right away. Open up, I, I know you're... Uh, who wants to be mysterious, um, poison? Your girlfriend left early this morning, pretty boy. So if you do us a bloody favor and shut up, that we real fucking polite. My hand, uh, pauses a short of landing another heading knock. From the other unit, Rebecca's other neighbor peeks in through his door, and though I see nothing but a bundle of blankets... I say they need help from being devoured by their sheets, but it sounds like he's just fine. But he's a huge asshole, too, course of action, so people like him won't ruin your day. Act like the nicest person on the planet. He has, has done me wonders when I was a rookie patrolling the streets. No need to match his temper. Oh, uh, did she say where she was going? <laughs> She said something about mating someone or something, in case Filipina girl over there asked. But what am I, her keeper? You know, some people want to sleep on a bloody Sunday, so keep it down. I was looking forward to this weekend. Thank you, you damn git. Well, there's no need to ask about it. I'll get out of your... He slams his door shut with a... Sorry, he slams his door shut without warning, but before muttering any string of very colorful words about me, he probably thinks I won't hear him inside the four walls of his apartment. Sure. I heard that. God damn it, we gotta go. <laughs> Alright, at the end of it, I sigh. So Rebecca's not here, I must have missed her about an hour or so, but at least she's not alone. She should be safe, in theory. Or so, if the person she's meeting with is with who I'm thinking. Nonetheless, I can help but worry. It is an easy thing, continuing down increasingly darker lines of thought. Back rashly to find where she is and go straight there without deliberating on my actions first. There's Zack to boot, and Rebecca's not alone, but I can't say the same for the big guy. A simple phone call to the both of them, uh, to the both of them should do the trick. I'll ease my nerves at any rate. It's better than rushing over to Zack's place or assuming Rebecca's whereabouts and finding out when uh, they are not if I guess where they should be. Assuming the worst will come next, which I'd rather avoid this early. Any other reason, I won't bother them. But an emergency begs for urgency. This is one, right? 
Even if it isn't, anxiety from the dull concern dulls judgment. Something I most certainly can't afford to lose at any given time, especially right now. Any means to claim will do wonders for the muddled, uh, muddled mess my mind is already in. Pulling up my phone, I thumb through the screen until it ends up on a group with only Zach, Rebecca, and Isabella numbers listed. Close friends! Abigail? Who is Abigail? What's with that face? Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> I don't know. Abigail, maybe he's not. Maybe he's not her best photo. So, <laughs> oh, God. that is a weird face. Other people will probably say I keep too few friends, but when they get the chance on this, to some extent, it's true. I can easily name a hundred people I've acquainted with through the years: colleagues, blockmates from uni, neighbors, those sorts of people. They all come and go, but these three, these three, have chosen to stay for some reason without wanting or asking for anything. Unlike others, none has Zack's kindness, Rebecca's patience, nor the sin uh, sincerity in Isabella's eyes. One day, these guys are just there. The next thing I know, being with them eases it. That heavy, som somber feeling lingering in the air when you stand alone in your apartment, or something as simple as spending your day without anyone. I'll say it's loneliness, but this carries much more death than that. If I can't help it, I don't want to lose any of them to some stupid curse. Phone call may be the least comforting thing at the moment. Honestly, I prefer to be in the same room with them right now. But I'll take what I can get. Becca first. She'll get angry at me for worrying about her. She isn't some helpless damsel in distress, after all. She isn't a shy little girl I knew when we were children. We we're only far from the people we were back then. But that's more than enough reason to check in on her. I don't have to imagine her, her ta uh, taking any head on. She'll do it instead of asking for help when she needs it. I don't care if she gets mad at me, if only to know that she's that she's fine. A ring and a silence of hallway. Its sounds alone might as well be sharp enough to pierce to my ears. Another second passes. Two, three. But when in the ninth ring, it goes straight to her voicemail, and a cold feeling instantly lodges in my stomach. Uh, who wants to be Rebecca's voicemail? Ah, shit! Eh. Okay, I guess I'll be the Irish woman. Oh, yeah, because Maria uh, yeah. is not... Oh. Um, Rebecca gals here, you reached my voicemail, so I can't get to you right now. Oh, and if this is Isabella, yes, you're free to reheat the food in my fridge. Otherwise, I leave a message. Probably just busy, that's all. Though I... Barely manage to keep my voice even when I speak. Hey, back, uh, uh, yeah, call me back when you're free. Uh, we need to talk ASAP. Becca will be alright. Is alright. She's safe. She's with someone else. <sighs> In the event that woman shows up, someone, kitty cat, what are you doing? Alright, just chill with me, kitty. Alright. She'll have someone with her. Someone will be able to ask for help. She's safe. She can handle herself. Becca might have a fiery temper, but she knows when she's faced with something she can't handle herself. Rebecca will see my missed call, and she'll call me back. Though I don't express it enough, Rebecca is someone I consider important to me. Flashback. She's been my friend for the longest. Anybody else would have fed up with me and left. The girl's stuck by me, no matter how big of a jerk I've been. There's Zach and Isabella now, too, of course. I'm always thankful for having them around. Worst times... Uh, worst times before, however, Becca was there. No one believes it when I say it, but I also surely, uh, surely had my awful moments as a bratty kid. As a horrible teen. Issues, I have uh, have too many of them to count. I refuse to deal with them for a time. At least, that's what Andrew likes to tell me. I like to think of nothing of it. It has mellowed down over the years. Thanks to the professor, mostly. But at the times, I still do wonder if it still burdens me in the way it did all those years. After all, I was terrible, especially around the time of my parents' separation. Looking back at it now, I had no reason to direct all my frustration towards everyone else. Well, I wasn't a kid who lashed out at everyone, preferring to keep it to myself and turning those negative feelings into more productive things. I've grown distance from a lot of people because of it. From my old friends back in my old school and the neighbors I hung out with uh, before moving. A habit I likely brought with me into childhood. 
I was just so angry with everyone and everything. All I keep thinking was about myself and wondering, why me? In retrospect, I, I was selfish. A little bastard who thought the world revolved around me. That I should have been going through it. I believe my behavior was entitled. That I had to write. Tough times, be she stuck with me. Snapped, uh, snapped uh, me out of my little sulk, as she often freezes it, whenever she sees a chance to bring it up. She didn't tolerate my bullshit, and, but she didn't leave me alone either. If anything, the whole thing was made her stick around. My, her concern may have grown a bit overbearing as the years went by, but she's still an old friend, nonetheless. I owe her a lot. That won't change. Ugh. Damn it. Where are you, Becca? Another message in her voicemail. Then, my third call, I hang up. For the time being, I can't do anything more than wait for her to return my calls. Boring aimlessly won't get me anywhere. Zack, on the other hand. That guy attracts trouble no matter how much he tries to avoid it. Doesn't help me, uh... I'm sorry, it doesn't help how he doesn't has... Ugh, has been too hot lately with a lot of people. His mention of plans yesterday doesn't sit with me either. He might have been the next responsible adult after Rebecca, out of the four of us, but I still gotta check on the big guy. Make sure he's doing okay, at the very least, whatever he is planning on doing. All I'm asking is not to be idiotic. He's a sensible guy, I'm sure. However, desperation clings, and people pushes people to do things rational or irrational, and may it doesn't matter. Clearing, thinking, flies out of the window for the moment you're in danger, and I sincerely hope has not found himself in a tricky situation. His phone doesn't even ring before it answers, or his voicemail, at least. All right, Zacky boy, get your voicemail. Hey, it's Zack. Well, my voicemail, anyway. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, so, uh, just leave a message, yeah? That's professional. Oh, and no, Ash, you're not allowed to lockpick your way to my apartment again. Just do what any other decent human being does and call. If I'm not around, if I'm not around, thanks. Although you did call me and you got my voicemail, so if you hear my voicemail, then you can go ahead and bring it to my apartment. It's okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> did he turn it off? Why? I don't want to assume the worst yet. Maybe he has forgotten to charge it. Can't be. The guy could be a bit of a boy scout, even more than I am as a cop. But the type who has an extra extra battery or a power bank in his bag, if he ever needs it. He always does... He doesn't say anything or brag about it, but he's got quite the rouser of VIP freelance's client. But I just won't leave his phone dead in case if he's on the field, particularly the people will be likely looking for him. He always leaves his connections open wherever clients or his friends need him. Zack is reliable like that. Oh, wait one sec. Oh. Sorry, I just ate like a really big chip. <laughs> nah, it's okay. I think it adds to the illusion. Yeah, it it's adds like... to the illusion. Like, I'm thinking all this monologue yeah. I have to read. <laughs> Very important things thinking about. Devil <laughs> eggs. <laughs> Let me pull out my pocket eggs. For, for a snack here. Uh, is anyone answering? His mobile is out of range. Area sounds plausible. Although, the thought of it doesn't completely shake off the unease. Unlike Rebecca and I, he took this time to listen to what Isabella said. Even if I didn't believe it, he was definitely the first one to offer help to, or try to do something. If he ends up uh, trouble, uh, trouble doing whatever it's, it, it is, so help me. I'm going to... Well, I can't be rash, I'm aware of that. I've been running the same reminder in my head since last night. But if something happens, I'm certain my reaction won't be pretty. The added guilt from those times I repeatedly dismissed him will surely haunt me. Yo, Zach, Z Man, call me back, alright? Wanted to check in and, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, sorry. The joke's usually between us, and when I say the Watson to my Sherlock, I don't see some assistant to put aside until he is needed, like someone like to believe, though. He's not some pity friend I keep around to make myself look good. If anything, he's the one who stayed by me out of pity. Zack's the one who 
puts up with uh, me the most of the time, even when he doesn't need to. If it's not a case of a cool cop who helped out a minority. In truth, I was hardened, hot temper, reckless rookie until I met him. It wasn't anything sudden, or some part of me is that still rookie. But I've grown think uh but I've grown thank him to him. Oh, but I've grown thanks to him. He tempers uh tampers that part of me. Oh, hey kitty, you wanna get off now? Alright. Wanna get off? Get there you go. Go go do cat things. Considering how our first impressions went, I'm lucky he stuck around. Beck and I may have spent a lot of years together as children, but Zack, he's probably the closest thing I call to a best friend. Though it's more than that, I camara uh, camaraderie no words can express. Uh, but he has my back, and I always have his. He's a brother I never had the luck of ever having. Only child and all. And I have every reason to worry about my brother. Hmm. Rebecca's neighbors say he went out to meet someone. No specific names. If we're wrong, she's not with Professor Clark. Maybe it's with Zack. They have been close, but none of the kind of awkward friendship when meeting together remains out of the question. Regardless, I continue dialing his phone about three times, like I've done with Becca's. In the end, the third attempt with no one answering, I stopped to move cut the call with a ragged exhale. Yeah. Waiting game it is, then. I've trained for those. Hell, I'm used to them. Just, just know when it comes to people I'm close to. I'd just like to remind myself to maintain a level head is a whole different matter when it's someone you know. Personal feelings will likely get involved at some point. Starting now. Actually, with the ancient stings coiling and uncoiling and causing a racket inside my stomach. And that's when the lining finally connects. Before he even speaks, my question has already slipped out, including every pent-up worry and tension in my body. Yo, where are you? The line is choppy, though I can still make out the words he's saying. Nothing to worry about, then. He's just someplace where the network's coverage is shitty. Can't imagine where he's at this time of the morning, though. Did he go out for a jog? Zack, man! Uh, what was that crash? Could you repeat that? Seems a little shitty here. I asked, where are you? Hell, Zach, I've been calling your number for a good 20 minutes now. What kind of shithole did you get into? I meant to sound as friendly as possible to keep things light at Amigo? least. Instead, only frustration <laughs> shows my tone. Uh, good morning to you too. I should be asking you that question. I've been looking all over the mansion for you. Oh, I knew it. I thought you'd be... What... mansion? Uh, I'm not... I'm sorry, do I really need to answer that? Why are you even... Please, don't tell me that's his plan. Morning visit to the mansion where Luke Wright is? Out of all the pig-headed things to do right now, it is the best thing he can come up with. Breaking and entering? We have plenty of reason to rail at him right now. Although, no matter how much time I want to give him peace of my mind, fortunately, it's not the time. No, no, wait. Just get your ass at Isabella's place, and hurry. He pauses for a moment, a second of indecision when he comes to contemplate his options. How urgent is this? In truth, the question, the hesitance, and the indecision in his voice has caught me completely off guard. An understanding dawns on me. His decision to go there is in the border of a stupid impulse. He must have found something. Something, no matter how urgent it is. He still hasn't gone there, alone at that. Despite myself, in a split second of comprehension, I allow it to show. A weakness. A simple request preeming with every unease disquieted, causing turmoil within me since last night. It bears a selfish hope he'll understand. Even as an unstable signal that would keep him, him there. He'll be waiting to set it aside for now. Pressing enough for you to stop asking questions and get yourself here. Please, Zach. Silence fills the other end of the line again. For a long moment, I assume he won't heed it. And I don't have to drive there myself just to drag him away from whatever danger he's skirting. Thankfully, he agrees. 
I'll be there in a few, um, an hour or two tops. Thanks. I'll I'll see you. Relief washes over me as soon as the call ends. Normally, I don't let myself a, a moment of respite in times like this. Gotta stay alert. Rebecca's still out there. He has yet to return any of my messages. For the moment, I relish in it. The probability, uh, the probably for the first time, I permitted myself to do so last since last night. Even the muscles of my soldiers have been complaining all the tensions I've taken on her. It still annoys me that all I can do right now is grit my teeth and trudge back to Isabella's apartment. Useless. That's when I'm in the face of this. Mad dashing dash around Luxborns and Anselm. Eh, Anselm isn't going to help things. It's not like I'll simply stumble upon them, across them on the side of the road during a drive. The city's too big for a place for one person to go searching for only two people. I'll be lucky if I get a glimpse of her, of the hair of either of them. With one last hopeful glance towards the open skies, I slip back into Isabella's apartment and close the door behind me. Might have already gone used to this, but waiting the will of, uh, but the wanting will always, always be the hardest part. More so when the people you care about. Question box. I'm assuming this is Isabella. Isabella. You're up early. I thought you left. It's not the first time I've seen Isabella like this. Standing casually by your kitchenette in a ladder in hand and keep an eye at whatever is stewing over the stove while humming to the soft uh, tone under her breath. Five years ago, it's become a common sight of the three of them, including Zach, Rebecca, and the mutual interest in cooking. After that, our schedule allows it. Some of them would invite everyone for to dinner or lunch instead of eating out. Rebecca prefers it this way, healthier she claims. Zach is too happy to be able to cook for everyone. And Isabella, on the other hand, as long as there's food, she's happy. Me, I've just been banned from the kitchen ever since the pressure cooker incident. Easier times, good times. Right now, however, this scene brings an odd sense of normalcy. A strange fit with all the things going around us. Not a welcome, only bizarre, I suppose. Isabella doesn't follow up her questions earlier, but she does raise an eyebrow about the way I, I take too long to answer. For that, only a casual shrug in response and a short answer. I have checked with Zach and Rebecca. I'm just waiting to hear back from them. Also, I need a moment to take a break from narrating. God damn, his monologues are long. So, it's let's take over. Time. Uh, I can help or, out. Or All right. Yeah, I... Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you can you can try out, uh, metal. Just need at least like okay. fifteen minutes or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, that works. Yeah. Uh, I'll add in a quip or two for her. If the timing for a joke isn't off, or doing so won't be inappropriate. I don't want to alarm her either. There's no reason to, yet. Until Zach gets here, or until I've received an answer from Rebecca, whichever comes first. Nevertheless, it's clear she has plenty of questions. It's right there in the subtle crease between her eyebrows and the inquisitive gleam in her eyes. Curious as she is, though, she decides against voicing all of her questions out. Instead, she shifts her attention back to the stove and gestures vaguely with her hand in the couch's direction. Well, if we're going to be waiting for them, don't stand around there. It's getting distracting. Yeah, you, you're just cooking. How am I distracting? I don't know. Something might explode again, maybe? Zach's kitchen van for you is also in effect here, you know. Now shoot, go. Stop hovering. You'll ruin the food. I'll be done here soon. She leaves no room for an argument by swatting the ladle at me, and just like that, I've been kicked out of the kitchen. Left with nothing else to do, I drift back to her tiny living space and slump down on the couch. Closing my eyes, I allow the noise from the television to guide my thoughts. The ones I've been keeping at bay, freeing them from the cage I've built around them, so I won't have to think. One by one, they trickle back into my consciousness, each more frightening and unnerving than the other. So many things going on. So many things happening. 
the papers we've gotten from BRC don't provide any comfort either. Seriously, is there even a point to those after last night? What will asking those people do? If anything, this only proved there might be more copies of that dumb piece of paper. We have one here, but how many exactly is there out there? More importantly, how do we get out of this stupid mess? Ashton? Damn it, I haven't felt this kind of bone-weary exhaustion in years. I don't want to think what might happen next in case I miss something. Sh shit. Rebecca. Isabella. They're all depending on me and... Ash! The voice snaps me out of my thoughts, abruptly wiping away everything running a racket inside my head. Suddenly, Isabella's there, crouched in front of me when I crack an eye open. I haven't even noticed the exact moment when I've bent over and buried my head in my hands, figures why she's staring at me like I've fainted or something. The crease on her eyebrows grows deeper at my lack of response. Although she's merely staring at me, without saying a word, her expression says everything. So much for trying not to alarm her with bad news. Yeah, sorry, I just spaced out for a moment. That, don't mind me. For a brief moment, she seems to accept that. Quietly, she shifts, stands up, and takes the empty space right beside me. All done without a single comment. Then, the next thing I know, she's gently pushing a bowl into my hands. The scent reaches me first, be before I've gotten the chance to take in what she has just handed me. A faint, sweet smell of cocoa wafts from the dish. Calming, comforting. Despite the multitude of things bothering me, it certainly smells like the kind of food you'll eat on a rainy day. Though, from the get-go, it doesn't look as appetizing. What is this, even? Porridge? Why would you put chocolate in it? I have Milk drizzled on top? It looks good. Is it like a British thing? She tells me my tastes are weird, yet here she is, handing me something equally as strange. In fact, she's Maybe already Filipino started digging is, hers. It would be a Filipino food item. Yeah, but it's Filipino. Oh, that'd be cool. I'm just not sure if the taste will be equally as appealing. Chocolate oatmeal? I'm thinking Malto meal, maybe. Mm. Baffled, I glance her way. She offers no immediate answer, and simply continues eating as if she hasn't done so in a week, with her focus solely on the television. She's not watching, however, just listening. As a background noise, the voices from it seem too cheerful, a welcome distraction, if anything. It's only after she has finished off half her bowl does she acknowledge the question in my eyes. With a sigh, she cradles the dish on her lap and looks down at it. Briefly, her lips part, then, clo then closes. A hesitation, though I don't push her. There's a distant air on her, as if she has remembered something that warrants a poignant thought. When she speaks at last, it's in a tone too careful, like she's still weighing her words, considering the proper phrasing for it. Yet, sincerity un underlies every syllable once they're out in the open. You should eat. Back at home, Mama would never let us leave the house if we haven't eaten breakfast yet. Even Papa has gotten an earful when he tried. So eat. You'll need it. Turns to her food afterwards. While I can only stare at the one she has pro-offered not a few minutes ago. Warm against my hands, tempting me to take a bite. Not that I don't appreciate this, but what good will this do? Zach and Rebecca's both out there. Who knows when the ghosts will show up again? Even in our dreams, we're not safe. But that's it, isn't it? 
We don't know when, and at present we have a chance at respite. Maybe the only one we'll have. Even if it's a mundane and sharing food between us quietly, just are we not going to find out what the heck the food side. is? <laughs> Never. Google it. Uh, the intent hangs unspoken in the air. Something that probably goes as far back as the second she offered tea. Still, in the end, Isabella never Isabella's never pushes it. Rather, she lets her own silence convey her hope. Isabella's just sitting there holding the bowl, staring at Ashton like, hey, are you okay? Uh, are you gonna, like, eat this? <laughs> Alright, you guys wanna eat the porridge? Eat the damn food! Or should we go on a, on a carb-free it. diet? <laughs> it's Dorado. It's chocolate rice pudding. Oh, okay. Alright, so. Let's take her damn offer. Yes. We're not gonna leave a boy hungry. Maybe this is a chance to you know, appreciate her cooking. Yeah. Uh, let's take this Take her offer and then we'll defeat the ghost with the power of friendship. Hell yeah. Although she does need to defeat this fucking right. room, it's still a mess. <laughs> okay. Alright, well, that... Thank you. The words roll off my tongue, awkward and unfamiliar, far removed from those jets and quips we've shared. Yet, she accepts it with a smile and nothing more. Regardless of everything left unsaid, the sight of it brings comfort. More so than any generous offer of food can give. Though we both lapse into silence after, as we finish our food, there's ease in it, in this, in the muffled sounds of Luxborn filtering into the room. And the light streaming from her windows, and the faint draft occasionally drifting in, catching the loose tendrils of her hair. And the way her voice falters when she tries to form words. Wait, are we gonna have another romantic, like, bullshit thing? Go in there. I mean, I don't <laughs> and see why not at this point. Horror <laughs> looming over us, I find myself wishing for the minutes to slow, for the seconds to last. Yes. Yes! Are we going, like, really slow? <laughs> okay. But ultimately, she's the one who breaks it, softly, after a minute's pause, and words mumbled under her breath. Sometimes, silence simply compels us to speak. Oh my. Oops, sorry. Ah! <laughs> I, I don't, I think she said, I've been wondering something, something. What if, what if Papa passes away, despite everything? That sort of thing. I know it's not good, not a good thing to think about, but I also knew it was getting worse. Mama won't say anything, but I've always known that one day he'll eventually. She gives a sigh as her grip on the bowl she still holds tight. There are no tears, but she might as well have them with how weak her voice falls. Are there even any left? I don't know what I'm gonna do now. Before, I can always easily say it's because of Papa, but now I don't even have anything. Well, you have that scholarship from Lux too. Wait, were you going through my personal papers while I was sleeping last night? That's not important right now. I don't really have to. You left it sitting in the open. Right there on the table. Like there's still anything to hide, she snatches it away from where I've placed it back earlier. Except there's no anger or annoyance in her face when she looks at it and rereads every line with a pensive expression. After a short while, she folds it neatly along the creases and sets it back. I don't even know if this will work out. Well, if it doesn't, what about that exhibit you've been planning with Zach? Do I even have to ask where you got that? Nah, yeah, Zach sucks at lying. You have no idea how easy he is to read. It was all in his face when I asked about it. I feel it 
attack. And anyway, if that doesn't pan out too, uh... You got your real estate job. Trail off, hesitating, measuring the weight of my next words. Genuine as they are, a part of me believes they're a burden too heavy to impose upon her. Because no matter how much I want her to stay, we are not what ties her here. It'll be selfish to ask that of her. More than anything, her family will always come first. I... If only to let her know that no matter what her choice will be, there will be people here whose lives her mere presence has changed. Mine, most of all. Y you... You have us. The, world, the words startle her to a pause, and slowly she turns to me, her eyes wide, disbelief all over her face. But before regret forces an apology at my throat, her expression dissolves to something I can't quite place. Something distinctly softer, more tender, familiar, almost in the same manner she glanced at me years ago. That day on the bridge. However, I don't get the chance to figure out what it all means for her. All of a sudden, a knock breaks the moment, and just as fast, both our attention shifts toward the source. Before things can get awkward fast, I stand up to open the door while muttering some flimsy excuse in the process. Wait, were we talking for like an hour? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'll get that. It's probably Zach or Rebecca. You know, unless Zach, like, bikes like the guy from Bolden Boy or something. I don't know. <laughs> really, I know we're in a pinch, but their timing can't get any worse. Unrelated frustrations aside, once I fling the door open, a whole chunk of the stone that has been stuck at the pit of my stomach simultaneously unseats itself. That was a weird way to describe things. Yeah, ew. <laughs> a lot of the descriptions in this. There in the hallway stands Zack, his hand raised, ready for another knock. Although he's not at his most presentable at the moment, ruffled and drenched with sweat as he is, relief quickly washes over me like a tide. He's still panting when he pushes me inside and heads in. The second his feet crosses the threshold, he scans the place, eyeing what little he can see of the room from the doorway. When finds none of whatever he's looking for, he turns to me with a questioning look, one that has a hint of panic in it. You said it was urgent. Did anything happen? Is it Becca? Bella? But, yeah, everyone's fine. Well, I mean, Becca's not here. She went somewhere this morning and hasn't answered any of my calls yet, but Isabella's... I'm here, Zach. Morning. His weight shifts at the same time, the stiff line in his shoulder eases. Once Isabella walks up to us and welcomes him with a smile. He relaxes then, returns her greeting in kind, as soon as he has let up the breath he has been holding and the tension's finally off his body. So, nothing's wrong? What'd you call me here for then? I feel like he thought there was like a big spider or something he had to, <laughs> he had to kill. Him. Like, he's like looking around on the floor, but... <laughs> Nobody just killed a spider! Ah, continue. My explanation can wait. He has a lot of explaining to do. The fact that he went to Anselm alone, for some godforsaken reason, warrants a proper one. <sighs> Ghosts or not, he's already been given a warning. It frustrates me to no end this might be the plan he mentioned the last time we spoke. I get that he's worried about Hannah Wright. Somehow they've become friends, but that's not the issue here. Look, I'm important. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, is this an emergency? Because Hannah and Marianne were at the mansion, and I kind of walked oh, away yeah. from a sweet threesome opportunity, but... Never forget. 
Uh, not, not when there's a murderous ghost who might go after one of us at any given time. Sure, Zack made it here in one piece. By some dumb luck, he's all right, and this takes one off the list of people I need to worry about. Frankly, as annoyed as I am, I can't just stay angry at him when I look at the situation that way. Hell, if that call didn't connect in that exact minute, there might have been a chance he won't be standing here. This is a blessing in itself. So first things first, some things need to be discussed. Alright, so, you want to go Baka's, Baka Zack, or you want to say you're, you're okay? My boy! Go. I'd be glad he's okay. Alright. Anybody yeah, else? I guess the second is, is a little more. Alright. Nobody for the Baka option? Alright. Go once. I, I don't know. I feel like I need to be told off. Alright. <laughs> Got one for no, Baka. You're okay. Two for okay. Come on. We need to make this spicy. I vote for two. Vote for two. All right, that's three. That puts us a majority vote here, unless Madeline wants to make it spicy. I'm guessing not. All right. I don't care. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's go. You're, you're okay. Bro, you okay? Also, I could take over the narration now if you need a break from it now, Madeline. You can take it back. All right. And you're okay. Except when I open my mouth. The only thing that spills from it, from it is my own relief. Despite myself, despite the rational part of my brain screaming for everything wrong about Zack's neat little plan. We had so many coast claws just within a single night. Zack showing up at Isabella's doorstep, alive, whole, and unharmed. I... I might as well take comfort in that while I still can. You're... you're okay. You did tell me not to do anything stupid. Suddenly the whole room feels too heavy and I'm all able to do is drop down on the couch. The headache also threatens to burst at the same moment. Or perhaps it's what its release of anxiety feels like. Regardless, I reach up a hand to Can we check to on our relationships? And likely nothing to alleviate the impending pain. Yeah, we can do that. All right, so we're in the plus zones over here between That's Isabella right. and Zachary here. Uh, you might not want to invest on the relationship on Rebecca since she's kind of gunning for that dank Luke, right? But other than that, that's about it. <laughs> Nothing's gone down, at least, I guess. Yeah, good. We're Gucci. Yeah. Christ, you were right there. We have this stupid, uh, stupid, stupid curse thing going on, and you were right there. Just walked up inside a private property. Those people can easily sue you for breaking and entering. I would know. It's literally happened to me. And that's the least of it. I know, Ash, but I, I can't just leave things as they are. I've got to do something. I know you're not very fond of the rights, but they don't deserve it if something bad happens. Hana, most of all. That's right. <laughs> God damn it. Zach, I was worried. <laughs> Unexpectedly, he laughs. Not the half-hearted sort he makes when he's awkward or coming up with an excuse. A genuine one. Look at that smug, happy smile. Before my annoyance grows again and I snap at him, though I suddenly catches, catches me in the headlock. His arms looping around my neck while he grinds his knuckle against my skull like a Helpless, I squirm under his grip and protest. Even then, I had to uh, had to do so when you're up against a six footer. Zach. Ah, uh, he's worried. Why didn't you just say so? That cool act ain't gonna fool me anymore. Like oh. He relents. Soon enough, he's only after uh, he's done ample damage in my hair. I hate it when he does that, giving me a knuckle sandwich in my freaking skull. For a few moments there, the intense mood finally lightened up, and everything felt like how it used to be before this whole mess again. Makes appreciating little moments like this easier. Still... Yeah, seriously, Zack, why were you even there? 
I told you already, I was looking for Hana and Marianne. <laughs> Why would I even go there? Well, you mentioned a plan with Isabella here. I assumed that you uh, that's where you guys went, since that's where she found the letter. Sorry, I was really at its dead end. The logic in it stuns me to a silence, to say at least. Then I remember his hesitance. The tone he has taken before agreeing to go there, and all at once my anger for what he shows wanes. Partly it's my fault for keeping things so vague. I can't berate him for assuming that. When I only left him with the vague answers. You could have called me. I did. But I didn't receive any, and my phone was with me. Kidding, right? I was at it the whole night. The whole atmosphere in the room changes in two heartbeats. Back again to the hey, tension. Do you have Horizon or like uh, I don't know, but apparently it's not giving us coverage. Go back to the tension riddle that one plague in us. Zachary stares at me like I've grown another head, and then gradually he shifts in the attention to Isabella. He expressed his eyes, questioning for a confirmation. Like my word can't be trusted, now that I'm holding it against him. I can't believe things are coming out of my mouth these past few months. Three hours. Meanwhile, Isabella still is quiet, and been like that for quite some time. She looks like she just wants to disappear right now. Guilt, frustration, anger, all these flashes fleetly across her face before it melts away under the expression of worry. Please tell me he's joking. You were there? No, we really didn't get any. Everything was quiet last night. But Zach at BRC, Ashton and I saw. She never gets to finish that. Ah, oh, god damn it! <laughs> Abruptly, my god. phone begins rapping again, blaring this badly seen ringtone throughout the whole room. Both of them pauses and waiting while I check them to call the other ID. It's back up. I'll tell her to get here as soon as she can. Uh, excuse me. Without another word, I slip out the room and answer the call. However, Stone, she, is, uh, she assumes isn't what I'm hoping to hear. Ashton, are you there? Ragged a bit out of breath. There's a tinge of urgency in it. Listening to her from my side of the line makes it seem like she just ran a marathon prior to this call. What the heck is my kitty cat doing? Rebecca, where? I got your message. What happened? Uh, well, nothing yet, but where are you? Don't say the mansion. Downtown. I, um, had to make a quick visit to the library. It's haunted. Uh, can you guys give me a quick I moment? Heard. My cat is trying to get something that she's not supposed to. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, one second. And every, everywhere is haunted these days. We've got the library, the office, the, the mansion. All right, my biggest apologies. So sorry about that. All right, let's continue. Who is Rebecca? I'll do it. Listen, Ash, about that thing Isabella's been talking about. There's something you guys need to... Uh, please tell me you didn't. Whatever. Save it for later. I'm at Salem Well. 
If you can get here as soon as possible, that'd be really, really great. This is related to that. You're there. Is Isabella with you? Yeah, Zach too. With a quick press of a button, I switch to loudspeaker and step back into Isabella's apartment. I hold out the phone towards the two, giving it two shakes, urging them to speak. Both are still carrying worry looks on their faces. This should ease that. Rebecca's asking for you two. You're muted. Oh, Becca, yeah. is she okay? Hey, Becca. Hello, Rebecca. Odd morning we're having, eh? Hey, you two. What's, what's happening over there? Is this something I should be worried about? So I'm kind of being chased by a ghost in the library. Oh, no. Uh, well, we'll tell you once you get here. Please, hurry. I don't like the sound of that, Ash, but I'm on the way. Give me a few minutes. I'm driving. Looks like the Scooby-Doo games is coming all together. She mumbles a goodbye and then hangs up. Becca is the last person I need to account for, yet she had a call left as an un even more stained tension in the room. Ellipses. Thankfully, we don't have to linger in it for too long. It only takes a matter of minutes to get it, get it here, and the second she sticks into the room, Isabella clings to her. Ah, we got an achievement called Safe and Sound. I'm so glad you're okay. Ashton checked on you this morning, but... He did. I'm sorry, I was in a hurry. I didn't have time to drop by and let you know. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, what's important is you're here. Gang's all here. Yeah. No burnt to a crisp or brutally murdered somewhere. Whole, alive... Although she seems a bit shaken, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. At least for now I can relax, ease the pressure off my shoulders, if only by some. The minute Isabella pulls away from her, she winces a small reaction. A younger woman couldn't even, doesn't even catch it. It sets a precedence for a careful observation. Uh, nonetheless, a closer look at it reveals a much more disheveled uh, than usual. Her hair is a bit of a mess. Probably flattened in a hurry. Then hurry, uh, then the back of her dress also shows stains of dirt and it rarely gets into. She's also leaning uh, more into her left arm. She's right-handed. Perhaps the most telling the slight limp she has. Noticeable once Isabella leads her to the room. And all sprouts of hatfuls or of questions. What exactly happened and how she ended up that state? Pretty sure a simple trip to the library wouldn't do that. I grab her arm before she can walk past, carefully to avoid haunt hurting her, in case the injury is, in, uh, is really an injury. Seems like at first glance she can't be sure until after careful examination has been made. I suspect she's some bruising in this. Although the minor internal fractures are not her equation, they have a nasty way of staying hidden. Sure enough, Becca tenses immediately upon contact. She tries to pull back, although it's Hidden, a sudden gesture only elicited another wince, forcing her to, forcing her in it, ah, forcing her into Isabella to a halt. Both of them turn to me almost at the same time. There are searching minds for answers. Rebecca, for her part, doesn't appear quite pleased with the interruption. In fact, someone has brought it to light, but that someone has to make. Are you all right? Or don't tell me that it was a thing, Joyce. Are you all right? Back, Becca. <laughs> well, I'm alright with the first one. Alright, two for let's, one. Let's be nice to Becca and continue to tease her. Hell yeah, I'm down for that. <laughs> on more, please. Alright. Yeah, it's usually so rude. We need to like go with the nice options to like balance it out. Alright, let's let's ask if she's alright. Be hilarious. We take a negative impact from this decision. <laughs> alright, so you're right, Becca. You okay? You're limping. As expected, she tries to hide it. This time oh, she, she looks angry. Maybe that wasn't the right answer. She squirms from my grasp, and is enough of force. She almost stumbles back if Ga Zach hasn't caught her by the elbow. 
Even the two people shooting concerned looks, she whiffs to shrug it off. It's fine, I just had a little accident. The ghost almost murdered you. <laughs> I know, right? Well, you don't really have to hide it at this point. Little accident, hard to believe, when the other arm is nursing the supposedly fine arm. Isabella doesn't buy any of it either. Isabella! In a library? Libraries are dangerous. <laughs> it's Fight Club night. The pen is mightier than a sword. Well, I, yes, he caught me off guard. Uh, something's happened there, hasn't it? No duh, egg boy. <laughs> I don't have to elaborate on that question further. Shortly, she goes very still, hand placed over her right arm, shifts to ever so slightly its grip on the limb tightening. Not too firm to hurt, but just enough for a gesture of comfort for herself. Finally, she casts a glance at everyone in the room. But if only she can spare Isabella's fingers longer in that moment, something unspoken passes between them. An understanding. It strikes me seconds later how utterly familiar her expression is. It's the same one I've seen too many times in Isabella. Since that day in the movie. For a uh, if someone wants to take over for session. Yeah, I uh, think... I don't know, let's see. I guess after this scene, uh, do you guys want to call it a night? Or or do you want to like wait till... Uh, uh, I guess I after this scene. Uh, not, not, not gonna lie, this, these conversations... What? This whole... These oh, scenes can... have bragged. Yeah. 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 Let's just try to get to the end. Ashton thinks a lot. Yeah, he has like, know, he's not, like he, thoughts either. he has like yeah. Batman levels of monologue. What is this? <laughs> I'll see you later. Look. All right. Oh. All right. Bye, Nick. All right. I, I can. I mean, I could cover for Ashton for a bit. Yeah, that's fine. Well, we'll just push through to this end right here. Since that day, the movie House, uh, every attempt, her attempts to warn us has been so rudely dismissed. Hmm. Let me see. Bella. Can can we? We have to check if it's bad. Rebecca hesitates None for of a moment. Doctors. Then, after a minute of consideration, she sighs and reaches for the hem of her sleeve, raising just enough for Isabella to take a look at it. Not swollen, but a large proportion of her skin started to turn to an ugly shade of purple. Oh, that's gonna be one hell of a nasty bruise. Tell me about it. It was a library cart that hit me. You know, the old metal ones they keep near the history section. Ouch. Like I said, nasty. But she's there? She went after you? Yeah, I was in the archives looking something up. Suddenly, she was just there. Bell, she was using my own students against me. What kind of terrible, terrible ghost person does that? Uh, next one, blood boil. Uh, you should have just ran. That woman's not something you can hit with a, with a book. Kinda did. <laughs> Laugh it up, Ashton. I did. Then the bloody cart came out of nowhere. You know what? If it wasn't for a damn book, I'd be dead by now. Silent descends in the room as the gravity of that word hits all of us. Dead. Another close call. Would another would have had. Another would have narrowly avoided and how long can we keep this up? We're bound to break at one point. No human being with the same mind can last like this. It's a miracle Isabella hasn't cracked yet. After all, she's the one who found that letter. I expected her to be uh, car uh, caved in by now. Yet her voice, calm and composed in the face of this, is what cuts through the thick air. I'll go get a cold compress for that arm. You guys take a seat first. Ashton and I, we we have a lot of things to talk about. That marks the end of it, at least for the time being. As soon as Isabella returns and hand Rebecca the cold compress, uh, she promised to head straight down to business. Surprisingly easy, considering the rigid air in the room. Although there's some tense fumbling for words at first, the whole conversation gains steam. That what happened last night at BRC's with 
put on its table. All at once, everything we brushed off, carelessly ignored, brutally dismissed, and have been laid out for those close to uh, scrutiny. Zack's encounter with a woman in his dreams. Rebecca close brushes with death every time she appears. The dread, the fear, the terror she brings even to the, in the bravest of us. Everything. Because no matter how bleak this all seems, there must be some way out of this. This has to be. Logic be damned. Or at least with Isabella, I like to believe.